dress forms that they like sew mannequin. the stuff on. Yeah, mannequin. Yeah, like a mannequin. So how you make a duct tape dummy is you, you wear clothes you don't like, like a long sleeve shirt and some sweatpants, but sweatpants are awesome. I had to find a, like, a terrible pair of sweatpants in order to rip up. I, felt, I was like crying when I was cutting it up. Anyway, um, so you have a friend and they wrap you up in duct tape and then after you're, you're, you're covered up in duct tape, um, your whole body, you gotta have somebody cut you up because you can't move, you're so stiff. Again, you're like Ralphie from- uh, Very carefully, have an adult. <laughs> yeah, have an adult. When um, my brother and his ex-girlfriend were cutting me out of my duct tape dummy, they cut into my underwear, so I had a hot dog in the nude. <laughs> I was like, dude, you cut into my underwear. That was my favorite pair. I was wearing Batman boxers like an adult. Oh, no. yeah, I know, then, I know. then you can favorite. stuff it and you'll have it and then you'll have like a duplicate of your body so it makes making costumes so much easier i have it for myself because my body shape is not a dress form normal body shape so i need something <laughs> for my body so that that yeah so i mean there's two reasons right Rachel? yeah so it's super helpful like it, it I, that is probably, if you are looking to start into sewing um, or making your own stuff, that would be your first step because having a body double and being able to like put the clothes on a mannequin and looking mm -hmm. at it and being able to kind of like, oh, okay, I need to move this over and things like that. Then you can kind of pin stuff right on there. It just, it really is good. Yeah, when I was doing my uh, my bat pool, um, I have the, the bat pool symbol I have on my chest. I made out of um, foamies or crap, crap foam. And uh, instead of adhering it when it wasn't stretched out because it would look stupid when I put it on, uh, when you're adhering foam to spandex, put it on a dummy. You gotta have it stretched out. So when you do wear it, it looks normal. Because it, when you don't have it on, it, it's still pulling all the spandex because that part is stretched. So you have to put it on a duct tape dummy. Like if, it's like Superman. You're making a Superman suit. You put the blue suit on the dummy and then you adhere the S. Um, uh, I didn't use liquid stitch because um, the craft foam is not a fabric. I used like the spray on Elmer's glue. It's great, the spray on glue. I was like, Whoa. Did it ever come off? Um, no, no, it's still wow. there. It's still there. It's still on there and I haven't washed it yet. Gross. <laughs> yeah, <it's, laughs> I, I can hold, I have a whole panel of washing spandex belts. <laughs> so bad. We have the person in gray. No. Uh, hi, when do you get your plastic there? Uh, you can get that at Home Depot. It's, it's right. It's in the like the the spray paint section. Yep. Yeah. It's right where the spray paint aisle is. And the cool thing about Plasti Dip, it comes in a bunch of different colors too. Mm -hmm. um, again, it's an availability from the store. When I was spray painting these um, gold, no, no, uh, my swords gold, I used like a gray or white um, Plasti Dip, and then I did, went over with the gold because the gold was a little bit lighter of a color. Um, if you're doing like silver, you can definitely use black Plasti Dip. Like for like swords and stuff, but the plastic dip is great. It comes in all sorts of colors. It's great. You sometimes you don't even have to spray paint it because uh, you've already got the right color. But yeah, Home Depot, it loads. It it comes metal colors. Ooh, metal oh. colors. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, oh, clear coat. Ooh, that's cool. Fancy, Fancy pants. Uh, <laughs> yes. So, okay, so mainly at cons, if you're if you're doing guns, um, making sure that you have the orange tip, that tends to be the- Just the tip. Yeah. So, I mean, this this kind of has, I mean, this looks super fake, but there are some guns that, that really look real. It looks um, super fake. It looks, looks like super fake. Space movie. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, I mean, and it, it is for safety and knowing that, um, but making sure you do have the orange tip for guns and stuff is really important. Um, but if you're doing something like arrow tips, um, I think making sure you have rounded edges or things like that can usually get through security fine. Um, making things that look like real metal. Uh, there's awesome, like if you do more of like the mold technique, um, they have like actual metal powders that you can add into the resin and you kind of buff it out and it looks like it's real metal. Um, I, I think, uh, Dev Props does um, a really great tutorial on YouTube about it. Um, but yeah, there's all kinds of ways to re really make things look um, like metal, but always making sure if you are crafting a costume, like you can't have super sharp edges. You just can't. Like even this, like it looks really sharp, 
but it has more of like a rounded edge. It's, it's not gonna like pierce through somebody and it's and it's not like super thin. So, um, yeah. A lot of people um, with weapons, they like to use airsoft guns. And again, that's like yeah. convention by convention. Some will Some allow, it. allow it. Yeah. Katsukon um, allowed uh, <laughs> Airsoft guns, but they didn't allow Nerf guns, which confused me. Yeah, it, it, I was like, that was kind of ass backwards. Are like they, the staff doesn't always know the rules, so they oh. enforce different things, which can be confusing for a con goer. But always make sure if you are bringing um, props and stuff like that, the website for the con will always have their rules on there. And if they don't, then contact them. Um, but. I used to bring um, the wooden katanas for my Deadpool, but one of the conventions wouldn't let me come in. They, I, like, I think it was Anime Boston one year, they wouldn't let me in, and I just had like the training wooden katanas, and I'm like, they're, they're not real weapons, they're, they're, it's wood, and I'm not even gonna be taking them out. But a after that, I was like, I gotta stick with the foam ones, because I wanna go into the con, but I also want it to look cool too, so you kinda like, yeah. You gotta make a sacrifice. And then you there can if you always go like not. if you want to do shoots, you can have the metal weapons. You yeah. can have the real things for off-site shoots. But making like having a separate prop for the con that's like dulled or um, you know. But if you want things to look real, be sure to using like your metallics and things like that and, and um and looking at the real thing. Uh, so you can know the shading and when you're painting and stuff. So that usually is a cool trick I'm gonna do for swords is um, a yardstick, like sand it down, so it's it's clearly like a, just a really long ruler. But if you paint it off just right, buddy of mine, um, Raymond Ramos, he does blade a lot in the New England area, and his sword looks exactly like a real katana. He's a, a master painter.